scan. Yes. Just for the benefit of whoever it was telling me off last time. Look, we do have an order of surgeons. <laughs> there is no guarantee that we will stick with the order of surgeons, but we do have one. And it says Daryl first. I'm here, I'm behind you. There we go. Hello. Okay. See, I, I got this order of service the other day um, from John, and, and it wasn't as refined as this. <laughs> so I'm kind of quite impressed. We've now got little notes on it as well. So what it says on my order of service here at the minute is Daryl, intro and interactive bits. <laughs> okay. That's what you said to me. Okay, so here we go. Interactive bits. Let's do the intro first then. Okay. Intro first, and then we'll do some interactive. Yeah, yeah. Does that yeah, sound okay? That sounds good. Okay, so today we're going to talk about God, which is quite good, isn't it? It is it's the start, isn't it? Um, we're going to talk about God's promise, and we're going to talk about the fact that God never changes. Within that, I think what we're probably going to do is end up looking at perhaps what happens when we change, and how do we still stay close to God? when we're changing, but we know that God isn't. Because if we know that God has a promise for us, then actually that means something for our lives, doesn't it? It means something for how we live our lives and how we move forward. But, as we've talked about before, our lives are constantly evolving and constantly changing. And stuff comes along that throws us out of sync. Stuff is thrown in front of us where it makes us think, I'm not really sure, I don't really know. And it kind of wobbles us a little bit. But, still here and here, we know that God is there. But sometimes, life will try and convince us that God isn't there. Or God has perhaps gone somewhere else. And what we want to remind us all today is that actually, Whatever is going on, wherever we are, God is present. So that's what we're going to be talking about. And I thought the best way to do this is to basically, is to do a physical sort of thing really. Does that sound okay? You, you, you're looking a bit scared, John. Yes. It's, the physical thing is not for you. Okay. Okay, you're, you're okay. So what we need, we need some strong, strong men. Oh, that's definitely yeah, yeah. We, we need some intelligent men. Uh, we yeah. need, we need, we need, I know, I know. Um, excuse me, could you pick somebody out, please? <laughs> I'm, I mean, Matt George just fell flat, didn't it? I mean, I, I, I built that up really, really well. Could you do me a favor? Could you stand up? Okay, could you just stand there? Okay, okay. Put your arms out there, man. Okay, I've got up a little bit. Stretch them out. What do you think, John? Well, as in strong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Looks strong to me. Looking strong, looking strong. There we go. Okay. And we go. Still looking alright? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Hands down by your side. He's beginning to look nervous. He is looking a bit nervous, isn't he? He's got like even more nervous in a minute, John. Okay. Okay. Put the face forward. Can you feel my hands on your back? Okay, if you just put your foot forward a little bit. Okay, feet in a little bit. Okay, do you trust me? No. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's best to be honest sometimes, isn't it, really? Um, okay. Do you know what's coming next? You're going to fall back. Okay, you're going to fall straight back. Alright, you're not going to bend your body, you're going to go back as a plank. Okay, you're going to fall straight back. But that's okay. And do you know why that's okay? Because my hands are on your shoulders. Okay, you can feel my hands on your shoulders. Fortunately, I'm stronger than I look. <laughs> Which is a blessing, really, John, it's a blessing. So when you fall back, I'm going to catch you. Okay? But you've got to trust me. You've got to fall straight and keep your back as a plank. Look at that. Did you see that there? Did you, did you see what happened? He just went, shh. <laughs> right. Honestly, John, that was amazing. Okay. 
straight, keep straight, and fall back out. <laughs> Yay! Oh, that's great. Oh, that's great. Come on. How are you feeling? Sure, sure. Just stand there. Everlasting God The Lord is the everlasting God 
winds of the wind The waves bow down at your command You are the great and mighty God And you hold me in your hand You're the same God Who put the stars in the sky You're the same God Who wiped the tear from my eye You're the same God Who hears me when
said, let little children come to me and do not hinder them. For the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven belongs to such as these. When he had placed his hands on them, he went on from there.
growing in front of hundreds and hundreds of kids because they don't have a filter. So when you say something or when you sing something or when I do something, they'll respond instantly, you know, and they can respond to the most wonderful things. They can say the nicest things you can, they tell you you're the best person, you're amazing, you're fantastic. And they can also go, well, that was boring, wasn't it? <laughs> I saw that on TV last night, what are you doing? Have you finished yet? You know? And it's just wonderful. And that's, I believe, what Jesus wants us to be unfiltered. He wants us to see things for what they are. He doesn't want us to be rude. Because I don't, I don't think most kids are rude. Most kids are just unfiltered. They're just, some kids are rude, obviously. We know that. But not all kids are rude. It's just an unfiltered thing. And, and, and to exemplify this, I was working in a theme park um, the other day. Um, and I've done quite a lot of shows there um, this year. And it, it's not the easiest of gigs, I've got to be honest with you. Because it's a theme park and, um, and they want to go on rides. So they don't want to see some idiots throwing things in the air and trying to be funny. They just want to go and do their rides. Um, so I'm booked into doing three 30 minute shows every day. Um, and I've kind of negotiated the final 30 minutes. So actually, what I do in the final 30 minutes is I do short 10 minute blocks. As I walk around the park. So I'll just, if someone shows any slightest bit of interest in me, I'll stop and go, do you want to see a trick? And I'll do a little trick. So I stopped at this group of people, and it's about four little girls, a couple of lads, probably youngest about four, oldest about twelve, and doing some stuff, and they're all loving it. And wow, 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 brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. There's one girl, about eight years old. Seen it. Seen it. Rubbish. <laughs> and and I thought this was the funniest thing I've ever seen. And so I, I found it really amusing. So I'm, I'm playing along with it and I'm laughing. And and I think she's tweaked that I'm enjoying this. So she goes further and deeper into this. <laughs> I'm doing that. So I thought, right, so, so I've done all the tricks and I've got these cigar boxes. Um, so I have 12 boxes and I've kept them all, and them all together. And it's an amazing trick and I balance them all on my chin. And um, she sort of looks up like that and went, yeah, I suppose that's all right. <laughs> and it, it was the best compliment I've ever had in a show. And, and her grandma was lovely, because her mum was killing herself, her mum was just like loving it. Her grandma was like, don't do that, don't do that, it's really rude, that's really rude. And I went, it's not rude, it's funny, it's fine, there's a difference. And then, as everyone went away, I just suddenly feel these arms around my waist. And she came up and she gave me this massive hug. And she went, thank you, that was ace. You know? And that is why I believe what God is talking about when he asks us to have little children. It's like, know the moments. Know the people you're with. And know that God is with you. Because God doesn't change. We change. But God wants us to become something special. He wants us to become something amazing. Because at the end of the day, who are the people that are bringing more people to Christ? You're here. You know, and it's you being people.
answered the prayers because on Sunday night that he could stop. Well, sometimes Sunday night because when I went to sleep I had them. When I woke up on Monday morning I didn't. So the surgeons were around about eight o'clock because he no one came round and said, Well, you stopped. Well, well I told them they'd stop obviously. And they said, Oh the best one because I need them or drunk anything, I was then told I could actually have liquids instead of just little sips and throw a the drink. I could have liquids and stay out full for another day. And on Tuesday he said, Well it's fine seems fine, obviously it's healing there. I could go back to having a uh, what is it called a low residue diet. Yeah. So that I didn't know either what it was. Which is cutting out some of the notes, any, any, anything with bits in that could obviously get the stomach, so, the bowel, so it seems to be getting a lot better. And I thought, well, while I was in there, they came back with the results when, of the, the bit that they cut out, and they, they said that there's a bit of cancer in that, although the initial tumour, it took up to what they call T3 level, which means it's still in the belly, it hasn't got outside. I think it's, it was close to going out of the outer wall of the belly, but it's kept in there. So, although they've got out what they can, there's little bits, so they wanted me to have some chemotherapy in the future. But as yet, I don't know anything about it, but I've actually got a, a, like a video call with somebody from oncology this afternoon, which will obviously go into the things about what the future is and about this chemotherapy to let me know more about it because as yet I'm not full of what's happening. But the main thing is I think just to, to be thankful that God actually did stop the, the hiccups in time so I didn't have to have that extra surgery and obviously I'm, feel, I'm feeling stronger and stronger. And I've actually, I've actually walked from home down since so about this morning it's only about two mile walk which shows Physically, I'm healing, but obviously there's still quite a bit to go so it's to heal properly. Lift home, I think. <laughs> <laughs> it's up your own. But that's basically what's, what's been happening in the last couple of weeks. Anyway. That's brilliant. Number seven, I'm going to shake. Yeah, give him a clap. <laughs>
did this last time we came, um, so you should know it by now. <laughs> As if. Yeah. of time.